Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode 8 of the Crack Pack. Last episode, we started out with some very early game Britannia. We got our mana pool, we got our mana spreader, and we got some end of flames to allow us to turn fuel into some mana. And what I want to work on over the next couple of episodes is a setup with Britannia that I think is going to be really cool. But before we can actually set that up and make what I want to make, uh, we are going to have to make quite a lot of runes. These runes are used to to make a bunch of the higher end flowers and all of the higher end devices within Britannia and you can't really get into the cool stuff without any of these runes and quite a few of them require items that we don't have a good supply of. For example, uh, the rune of air right here requires some string, some feathers and some carpet which is of course made with wool. Uh, if we go over to the rune of winter it requires a cake which means we have to have a bunch of milk buckets and some wheat and some eggs and uh, so what I want to work on in today's episode is not Britannia but instead setting up some automatic mob farms over here and by mobs i mean passive mobs being cows chickens and sheep so that we can automate the process of getting milk wool which we can turn into string or carpets and then chickens which we can get both eggs and feathers from and we'll probably also set up a bit of a wheat farm over here as well so we can automate the process of getting wheat which in turn will allow us to make the cakes and also allow us to breed the cows and probably the sheep i think as well uh, if we so wish uh, and so the first thing we need to do in today's episode is get a way of getting all of the chickens uh, sheep and cows i'm not really too bothered about pigs they don't provide uh, much outside of pork which we don't really need if we get beef uh, that'll be a fair enough source of food uh, so we need to find a way of getting all of those animals into our animal pens uh, we could do it the normal way we could just get some wheat uh, or some seeds and just kind of try and lure them back but I don't really feel like doing that that seems like a very long and tedious way of doing it especially when we're playing modded and so instead we are going to use the golden lasso from extra utilities it's a little bit more expensive it requires four string four golden nuggets and one eye of the end which of course requires a blaze powder which apparently we do not have but uh, we do of course have our fluid transposer and our magma crucible downstairs so if we just quickly run down here we can stick the glowstone into the fluid transposer and the redstone into the magma crucible and then once that's done that gets us a piece of blaze powder which is going to allow us to make ourselves the eye of ender and then once we've got that getting everything else should be fairly easy uh, i don't quite yeah we don't quite have enough string uh, but i'm fairly certain we have some wool and if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to put this through the sag mill, and I think that should get us some string. Yeah, it does. Nice. All right, we'll take that. We'll throw that back into the AE system. That's going to get us the golden lasso, and essentially, uh, the way this works is you can go around, you can right-click on any animal in the game. I can see a chicken just over here. Whereabouts is it? Oh, it's all the way around on the other end of my house. Where is this chicken that I can see on the mini-map? If we can grab this chicken, uh, all we got to do is just simply right-click on the animal with the golden lasso. Here's the chicken, which give it a quick right click. That's gonna store it within the golden lasso. And so now if we come back over to where our chicken farm is gonna be, and I plan on putting my chickens in this little pen on the end here. Uh, all of these pens are five by five because all of the machines that we're going to use in today's episode work in a five by five area. Uh, most of the machines in the Mine Factory Reloaded do work in a five by five area by default, like the grinders that we have downstairs. Uh, but if we just right click into this little pen here, that chicken is now placed down in the world and it's reusable so now what we can do is we can go around and we can grab as many of all of the different kinds of animals as we like and so that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go away i'm gonna get a bunch of chickens a bunch of cows and a bunch of sheep and i'll be back in a second and a little while later now that we've got a few of each of these we can now start to automate the process of gathering all of the items that we need from each different animal starting over here on the end with the chickens because these guys are by far the easiest to automate all of the items that we need from the chickens those being the eggs and the feathers are just dropped directly directly onto the floor and uh, we don't need the chicken meat for anything in particular so there's no need for us to breed them there's no need for us to kill them all we have to do is pick up all of the stuff that they drop onto the floor inside of the little pen and so uh, all we need to do now is come back around to our crafting terminal and grab ourselves a vacuum hopper which is going to pull all of the items nearby uh, towards it we are missing an eye of ender which is an ender pearl and a blaze powder i did go ahead and make another blaze powder using the fluid transposer and the magma crucible downstairs and with this all we have to do is put it somewhere with in the chicken pen i'm gonna put it smack bang in the center here i'm just gonna put it one up from the base so they can still walk around underneath it if they'd like then we can go ahead and pick this living wood up we don't really need it down on the floor there and that is gonna pick up all of the stuff that we could ever need from all of our chickens and uh, we are gonna pull stuff out of this hopper and i'm thinking uh, for each of these animals we're gonna have a couple of thermal expansion caches which uh, could store a bunch of one singular item so uh, if we come back into here and we look up the recipe for the thermal ex 
expansion cache. They're kind of like uh, the barrels that we have downstairs from Jabba, but... They're a lot cheaper to make, and they could hold a lot more. For example, uh, the better barrel that we have right now from Jabba uh, can hold up to 1,024 items if uh, it's Ender Pearls, because Ender Pearls uh, stack up in stacks of 16. Uh, and if it's a normal item, like, for example, Bones, it can hold up to 4,096 items. Whereas, if we look at the caches over here, a basic cache can hold up to 10,000 items, and all it takes is four pieces of tin and then one log of any kind. And so, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of these. They don't stack, which is a a little bit annoying uh, but i'm gonna make at least two of these for each and every one of our farms over here uh, because the chickens are gonna give us of course the eggs and the feathers so we're gonna put down two right about here for those we'll put one there and one there and i'll use some item ducks to run uh, all the stuff out of the vacuum hopper and into their respective cache the cows are going to give us beef they're also going to give us leather and then the sheep are only going to give us wool so we really only need one for that and uh, we don't have one spare but i'm assuming we'll figure out a way to use that somewhere in the future let's just quickly get rid of this guy uh, and now i'm going to move on to automating the sheep because the cows are by far going to be the hardest ones to automate i want to breed the cows and i also want to limit how many cows we have in this pen at any given time whereas with the sheep uh, we might do a little bit of breeding. I might go out and grab some more sheep because there are quite a lot of them and uh, not so far away. But I don't really intend to set up any automated breeding where the sheep are constantly being bred and then killed for any particular reason because the only thing that we need from these sheep is the wool. And for that, we can make ourselves a simple rancher, which is a machine from Mine Factory Reloader that kind of works like a harvesting multi-tool. If you put it down in front of a set of sheep, it will shear them. If you put it down in front of some cows, it will milk them. And so we are going to make two of these, one for the cows and and one for the sheep because I would also like an infinite supply of milk if we ever decide that we want to make a couple of cakes for example in the recipes for the runes. Uh, so for this we need two shears, two sets of tin gear so let's go ahead and make four of those. We also need one of these redstone reception coils we'll grab two of those. We need of course a machine frame, real easy stuff we just need a tin gear, four iron and some glass it looks like we have a little low on glass so let me quickly go and grab a bit more sand and once we've got at least eight of this quite clear glass we can craft that up into to normal glass like so and then we can use that to make our two basic machine frames uh, and then finally all we need to finish up the rancher here are two plastic sheets and then one plastic pipe which is made with six more plastic sheets you get eight of them uh, i don't think we quite have that many plastic sheets in our system we don't uh, but we do have a little bit of raw plastic and i did before the episode started grab a little bit more rubber and start smelting that up into these rubber bars and so if we grab those we can come back over to the alloy smelter over here we can put in the rubber bars there we can craft up our raw plastic into uh, some plastic sheets uh, as soon as one of those is done that should get us one more raw plastic which is gonna be enough to make another four plastic sheets which should be more than enough to do something like this get us another four uh, which is more than enough to get the set of six that we need for the plastic pipe like so and then we should be fairly easily able to make two of these nice so that's going to get us the two ranchers one of these uh, is going to go in front of the sheep and what that should do when we provide it with power is it, it should shear any sheep within a five by five area in front of it for example uh, if we get rid of this i think these machines face the opposite way to where you place them as uh, so yeah placing it down here means that it's pointing in this direction i have cut a bit of a hole out over here which runs down to where the power is being generated by these magmatic dynamos we are going to have to go a little bit lower so that we can get across to where the actual cables are and i'm fairly certain that we do not have enough power conduits to actually run all the way up to the rancher just yet but again i did start cooking up some more conductive iron and so uh, if we stick that in the middle put the conduit binder all the way around the outside that's going to get us some more of these basic energy conduits we're not going to need any higher tier anytime soon 640 redstone flux is more than this rancher is ever going to use and so if we just run this along from down here and up through to our new rancher like so uh for now you know we'll dig underneath here i'm hoping we don't get any dirt monsters in there as soon as i said it we got flipping two of the guys so we'll run this all the way under like so between episodes i'll cover all of these up so it just looks like grass this guy is now receiving power and as you can see it's already harvested three wool it sheared all of these sheep because the sheep are on grass they should uh, grow their wool back over time at which point uh, the heart the rancher will just run down its idle tick every 400 ticks it'll run down it'll check if there is any sheep to be sheared you can see there is one here right now we have three wool as soon as this runs down to zero it should go ahead and check all the sheep shear this one and then dump the wool directly into the cache up here and as you can see we now have four wool stored in this cache out of a potential 10,000 that we can start in total which is pretty cool stuff so now we've done that that's basically the sheep automated and the chicken automated we do need to run some conduits uh, to get the stuff out of the item hoppers and into the caches over here uh, but now 
The hardest one that we're going to have to automate is the cows, because I want to do a couple of things to the cows. First of all, I want to have a normal rancher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this right about here, and I'm going to put down the rancher right there. The reason why I've put it there, and we are going to have to cover this with fences, because otherwise they do try to escape like this guy is trying to do. Ah, oh, please go back into the pen. There we go. I don't know why I'm pushing him. I do have the golden lasso, and I could fairly easily just grab the guy and force him back into the pen like so. Uh, but now we can cover that up. Uh, the reason why I've put the rancher here and not at the front or the back of the pen like I've done with this rancher is because I also want to be able to breed and slaughter these cows so that we can get a bunch of leather and also a bunch of beef that we can use as a good source of food. Up until now, we've been using toast, which is not bad, but it means I have to go over to the nearby village, harvest all of their wheat, bring it all back, pulverize it all up into some wheat powder, which I can then smelt up into bread and smelt again into toast. It's a little bit tedious, and I would much rather have an automated system that will just harvest the beef from all of these cows and then cook it for me and put it into my AE system for me to grab it whenever I like. Or maybe just put it into one of these caches that I can come and grab whenever I need some. Uh, so right about now, if we just dig under and round to the uh, the harvester there, I really do not like the block monsters that spawn in this mod pack. They are the worst. But if we go ahead and run uh, some conduits all the way around and to this rancher, that should instantly start to milk all of the cows. And much like the rancher for the sheep over here, it should continuously check over and over and over again, about every 400 ticks, to see if it can milk any of the currently alive cows. Let me get rid of this guy again and run this along under here like so. And then if it can milk them, it will milk them. And it will put, for now, the milk into the rancher. You can see here we've got 2,000 millibuckets uh, or two buckets worth of milk already in the rancher and so uh, what I'm going to do to store that is I'm going to make another one of the drums from Extra Utilities to allow us to store up to 256 buckets worth of milk at any given time, which should be more than enough to make as many cakes as we're ever going to need. So, uh, to make another drum, it is again quite simply just some iron, some more of these weighted pressure plates, and then another cauldron in the center, which is just even more iron like so. Craft all that together. That's going to get as a normal drum. And then for now, I'm fairly certain that we should be able to just place this down directly on top of the rancher, and it should automatically output put all of the milk into the drum above it. So, if we get rid of this, put that there, yeah, it's going to start filling up. You can see right now we've got 4,000 millibuckets, and that is going to continue to run over and over and over again uh, until the drum is full. If the drum's full and the ranch is full, it'll stop working. But at that point, we should have more than enough milk to last us for quite some time. And now, uh, the final and hardest part about automating this is getting these guys to breed, but also ensuring that we don't have too many of them. Because uh, it's very easy to put down a breeder, which again is a machine from Mind Factory Reloaded, which will uh, feed the cows wheat, causing them to breed, and will cause more cows to be spawned in this area. But but it's very easy to leave that going and end up with just a ton of cows and they will just cause so much lag that it's crazy. Um, and then on the other hand, there is a grinder that we can put down which will kill the cows, but if it's not regulated, it will kill all of the cows and there will suddenly be no cows left. So uh, we kind of have to come up with a system to where we only kill uh, so many cows. We still have a decent amount of cows left in our system. And so to do that, we're going to do a couple of things. The first things we're going to do are make the grinder and the breeder and stick them down uh, on either side of the cow pen. So if we come back over here, uh, the recipes are fairly similar. If we look at the recipe for a grinder, it is again, more plastic sheets, another machine frame. We should have uh, quite a bit of glass in here by now. We've got five. Oh, I took all the sand out. Uh, let me put the sand back into the alloy smelter here. All of the rubber has been smelted up into the raw plastic. So if we come over here, we should be able to make some books fairly easily. Let's go ahead and craft some wood into wooden planks, and we'll use those wooden planks to make some of these blank patterns. We should have a little bit of string left from earlier when we pulverized the wool, so making two books should be fairly easy, but it looks like we're missing a little bit of paper. Again, thankfully, we have our sugarcane farm out here, which again is not really a farm. Uh, it's more of just some sugarcane that's kind of standing here waiting to be harvested, uh, but it is coming useful quite a few times now, and so uh, let's come back to our crafting terminal. We can craft that sugar cane up into some paper like so. And then once we've got that, we can make ourselves a second book. We can make ourselves these machine frame if we get one of these gears. I'm going to make a few of these because we are going to need quite a few of them uh, for making all of the Mind Factory Reloaded machines in today's episode. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll make at least three of those. We then need an Invar sword, which is just a stick and some Invar, which we don't have because we don't have any sticks.
sticks in our system. We can rectify that very easily with some wooden planks like so. And then once that's done, we can grab the Invar Sword. We can grab the Redstone Reception Coil, which again, I'm going to make a few of because I'm fairly certain that we need it for all of the rest of the machines. And then once that is done, that gets us the Grinder. Apparently, we are missing plastic sheets. We are indeed. Let's just quickly do something like that. Stick those in like so. That's going to get us the Grinder. And then the Breeder, I think, is a little bit more of a tricky recipe because it requires two golden carrots and one golden apple. The golden apple shouldn't be too hard. However, I don't think we have that many carrots, but we do have these carrot seeds that we were using last episode for breeding purposes. And so uh, if we quickly grab ourselves some crop sticks, we should be able to, uh, to get some more carrots fairly easily. Let's come out here. Uh, let's get rid of, I guess, like these for now. And then if we do something like this and this and use our watering can to force these to grow a little bit faster, that's going to get us some more carrots, which we can take. And then once we've got those, we should now be able to craft up those two golden carrots fairly easily like so. It's just a carrot surrounded by some golden nuggets. We then need two purple dye. Uh, we should have a bunch of rose red left over from last episode. We do, so we can craft that together with some lapis lazuli. That's going to get us the purple dye that we need. And then we can craft all that together to get ourselves the breeder. Nice. So, again, much like with the other Mine Factory Reloaded machines, we're going to put one of these on either side of the farm. Again, they work by default in a 5x5 area. I say by default, I'm fairly certain that you cannot increase the radius of any of these machines. Uh, I put the breeder on this side because I plan to have my wheat field over here, which is going to be pumping wheat into the breeder. And then on this side, we're going to have the grinder go right about there because I want the grinder to kill the cows and then output all of the stuff into either one of these two caches up here. One will be for leather and then one will be for beef. So now we've got this up and running, I'm not going to put the power on yet because like I said before, uh, the grinder will just kill all of our cows and leave us with nothing. And also the breeder, there's no point powering this up yet because there is no wheat within it. And so what we're going to work on now is setting up a little wheat farm over here that is going to provide a somewhat slow but constant supply of wheat to our breeder over here to allow these cows to continually breed every so often. We don't want them to breed excessively. We don't want a ton of them. We don't need that much wheat, uh, but we do want a, a fairly nice amount of it. Uh, so let me quickly switch over to vein mode here so I can get rid of a few of these trees. And then once we got rid of these, essentially, all we're going to do here is we're going to have uh, a planter and a harvester. The planter is going to plant a continuous stream of wheat seeds. And then the harvester is, of course, going to harvest that wheat, put it in a chest, which is then going to get piped around into the breeder. There are so many, they happen so often, these flipping dirt cubes. It is ridiculous. But essentially, uh, if we go back inside here, uh, the planter and the harvester are recipes, which, again, very much resemble the uh, the mine factory reloaded pattern of recipes. Uh, how? Oh, that guy's got out because we didn't put fences on top of our machines. We should go and rectify that very quickly indeed because for some reason there are not many cows around here whatsoever. It was kind of a challenge to find the ones that we did find. Uh, let me go ahead and do something like that and something like that. That should block them from getting out. We were slain by a spider, which is just fantastic. But we can come back over here. Uh, the planter is really easy to make. It's just two pistons, two copper gears. We are missing uh, a Again, some more oak. Let's go ahead and just craft up like a stack of that so that we don't have to keep doing it over and over and over again. Two pistons, real easy stuff. A flower pot, which I was a little dubious as to whether or not we were going to be able to make, but apparently we can. Uh, we should be able to make copper gears with iron in the middle instead of stone gears. And then once we've got all of that stuff, we can get ourselves the planter. And then finally, the harvester is this guy over here. Uh, a little bit more tricky to make. Again, it requires some more invar tools, but again, those are not all too hard to make. All we need to do is ensure that we have enough sticks to make the tools and then once we've got both of those we need to get ourselves another set of shears we should already have the plastic sheets inside the golden gears again can be made with iron in the middle instead of a stone gear so we can just do that and grab two of those and then finally we need one more of these basic machine frames which does require a little bit more tin which again can have iron in the center instead of a stone gear once we've got all that stuff we can get ourselves the harvester Nice. So, uh, unlike the other Mind Factory Reloader machines, the Harvester and the Planter do not work in a 5x5 area. Instead, by default, they work in a 3x3 area and require upgrades in order to increase the radius at which they can work. And so, what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly check how big an area we have over here. And I'm going to adjust the upgrades inside of the Planter and Harvester, dependent on how big our area is. So, I don't quite want the wheat farm to go all the way out to the edge. Actually, I kind of like this corner here. So, if we say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If we say 12, 
Uh, we might have to say 13, because I think, if I'm not mistaken, the upgrades work in odd numbers. So if we say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we put this down as the middle, so we'll put the harvester right about there. I can see that block that's creeping out from underneath our platform. This guy can get out of there. Uh, that's going to be the middle of this side, and then we want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is going to be dead center of our wheat farm, so we'll go ahead and put the planter down right about there. You've got to put it one block below where all of the crops are going to be planted, so for us, it's got to go right about there, and, and that's going to plant in a 13 by 13 area around it, or at least that's where we want it to plant. By default, it's going to plant in like this area around like this. It's going to plant in this little 3 by 3 area just in front of it, and so what we need to do is we need to grab some upgrades from Mine Factory Reloaded, which are these ones over here. And you can see that there are a bunch of different upgrades that increase the radius by different amounts. For example, the Lapis upgrade, which is one of the easiest to make, increases the radius by one. So instead of doing this three by three, it would go one further out and do a five by five. And if we wanted to go all the way out to here, we would need a radius increase of six, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, we might just need a radius increase of five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, which one does the radius increase of five? It's bronze. So we need to make ourselves two of these bronze upgrades stick those into the harvester and the planter that's going to allow them to plant and or harvest in this 13 by 13 area to make these it's really easy it's just some bronze ingots some more of that raw plastic some redstone and some golden nuggets and so what i'm gonna do now guys i'm gonna go away real quick i'm gonna grab both of these upgrades so that these guys can work in their 13 by 13 area i'm gonna dig a path underground so i can run cables to both the planter and the harvester and i'll be back in a second and a little while later, I now have two of these bronze upgrades, so we can put one into each of these machines. You can do it in two ways. You can see just then, uh, you can just right-click onto the uh, the machine with the upgrade, or you can just right-click and put it into the slot in the bottom right, like so. I've also gone ahead and started to run some power cables along. The planter is now receiving power, and uh, the harvester is not currently receiving power, and that is because uh, what I want to do now is all of the stuff that comes out of the harvester is going to get put into the chest behind it, this one here. So the planter is going to plant down all of the wheat seeds, over time, those wheat seeds are going to grow into normal wheat. They are then going to get harvested by the harvester, and this chest is going to become full of wheat and wheat seeds. Now, we want those wheat seeds to go back down and around and into the planter. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to run some item ducts. I made some more of these. We're going to run these down and along and back round to the planter so that all of the seeds can get taken round to automate the system. So all we have to do is grab one of the servers, stick it down right about here on the item duct right click on that make sure the uh, the redstone control is set to ignored make sure here it is set to whitelist and then we are going to put whitelisted seeds into this slot and that means the only seeds are going to get pulled down and sent along through the planter that does mean we're going to have to rearrange a little bit here uh, to get power up oh my goodness these fudging guys we're gonna have to rearrange a little bit here uh, to get power up to the harvester but that's fine we can just go up and around like so and then we can cover that up with a conduit facade later on between episodes and so now both both of these guys should be working at maximum range and it should be a self-automating wheat farm and all we need to do now is make sure that all of the wheat is pumped out and around and into the breeder like so. So again, we will stick down the server on them, not on there. I didn't even know that was possible. We'll stick down the server on there and again, ignore the redstone, make sure it's set to whitelist and this one will be whitelisted for wheat. And so now all we have to do is grab some wheat seeds and we should be good to go. So let's come in here. I don't know if we have that many wheat seeds in our system. Uh, we wow, we do. We got 181. Wow. Okay. Uh, I thought we were gonna have to head on over to the uh, the village over there and and grab all of those, but apparently not. Apparently, we are more than fine on the number of wheat seeds that we have. And so, uh, if we put all of those into here, uh, you can use this filter over here if you want one planter to plant multiple things. Uh, but for now. This will work just fine for us. Uh, it's not quite dug out correctly. Uh, you'll know that you'll notice that it goes six in this direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we should really get rid of blocks like this one and all the ones that go into the corner. Like so, you'll see it's filling it up. And look at this. My goodness. We'll get rid of this torch and we'll stick it down just next to it right about there so it continues to, uh, to stop mob spawning and uh, we should probably also have one like over here and we should also uh, continue on this farm around like so so that the farm can continue planting and we can get the most amount of wheat possible and this should be a fully automatic wheat farm that is sending all of its stuff up and to the breeder pretty cool stuff. So we've now set up a system that allows us to automatically breed these cows. You'll see it in action as soon as we get some wheat. Actually, do we have any wheat inside of our system? If we do, uh, I can kind of show you how the breeder works. Let's have a look. Do we have any normal 
wheat. We do. Wow, actually, we have two. That was not planned, I promise you. But uh, if we head on back outside, uh, we can, uh, first of all, whitelist wheat on the uh, the chest over here. And we should also whitelist the seeds as well. Uh, for some reason, we've ended up with some potato seeds in there. I'm not quite sure why, uh, but I guess that's fine. Let's just grab one of those wheat seeds and then make sure that this is whitelisted over here. This is now fully automated. And, uh, for example, if we put uh, the wheat into the breeder and hook this guy up with some power, which is going to require uh, a couple more of these uh, these energy conduits, like so. And then once that's done, we can put in the wheat. Again, the idle tick is going to tick down every 200 ticks, which is about every 10 seconds uh, in Minecraft. And then once that's done, we should see the love hearts appear above both of these cows, like so. That's going to, of course, cause them to breed, and we will get ourselves another cow. And it does start down another cooldown. You can see we've got a 300 second timer. Uh, so we've got to wait another five minutes now before these guys can breed again. But once we get a decent number of them going, we can start to breed pretty quickly, and we don't have to worry too much about this idle cooldown. So, now we got this, this is where the problems start to arise, because we could just leave and have this run forever, but if we did that, we would end up with a ton of cows that would cause a ton of lag, and would be almost entirely useless, because there's only so much milk we can get. Uh, and so... We need to find a way to kill only a certain amount of them. And to do that, we are going to use what is called the Eye of the Ancients, an item from Batania, which allows us to kind of count how many mobs are inside an area and then send out a redstone signal that aligns with the number of mobs inside of the pen. So if we come over here and we type in Eye of the Ancients, it's this block over here. It's fairly easy to make. It's four mana steel, four living rock, and then one Eye of Ender. Again, we are missing some more uh, blaze powder. I feel like I've done nothing but Make blaze powder throughout this entire series so far so let's go ahead and make some more of this i should probably just make like 15 or 16 in one go to save me having to keep putting back down here uh, but we'll do that i don't think we currently have any mana steel we don't uh, mana steel is really easy to make it's just iron into a mana pool like so one two three four once we got all those we can go and quickly grab our blaze powder from downstairs and once we got that, we can use that to make ourselves the Eye of the Ender. And then once we got that, we can make ourselves the Eye of the Ancients. Pretty cool stuff. So, uh, this block is going to work in conjunction with a comparator. Uh, we're going to go with, I think, just a vanilla Minecraft comparator. There is also one from Project Red, which has a little bit more functionality, but also a functionality that we don't really need. Uh, so, let's go ahead and quickly grab three of these redstone torches, get ourselves a redstone comparator, uh, grab a little bit of redstone. And so, essentially, what this is going to do is uh, if there is only one mob inside of the pen, inside of a 6x6 six six area around the uh, the eye of the engine here. So, for example, we are going to have this go directly beneath this stuff. Oh my, oh, flipping it. The downside to being in bad form all of the time is that when we do come across those pesky little dirt block monsters, we almost die instantly because they are uh, not that powerful, but really fudge and annoying. So let me get rid of all my death points here and let me quickly go ahead and replace this dirt because I do not want these cows falling down here. But essentially... Uh, let me, oh my goodness, clear some space. Essentially, oh my goodness, every single one. What we're going to do is we're going to have the Eye of the Ancients go right here in the center, and it's going to detect how many mobs are above it. And it's going to use that number to output a redstone signal. And the way that it works is if there is one mob, it will output a redstone signal of zero. So if we put down the comparator right about there, that's actually the wrong way around. Let's put it down uh, right about there like that and if we like that and we look at this we can see right now we have a power of six which means that it's calculating that there are seven mobs in a six by six area above it so uh, if we were to find a way out of this place which i guess we're going to go through here and hope it doesn't become a block monster which it didn't thank goodness uh, but it's calculating seven mobs in a six by six area we have three here four five and then probably like six and seven like these ones are probably walking in and out of the area uh, but essentially what it will do is if, it, if there's only one mob oh my goodness if there's only one mob uh, in the six by six area it will not output a redstone signal if there are two mobs it's going to output one redstone signal so a redstone signal strength one if there are three it's going to output a signal strength of two if there are four a signal strength of three and so the signal strength will always be one less than the number of mobs so right now there are seven mobs detected by that eye of the ancients in the area above it which makes sense you know, we have a lot of sheep, we have a lot of cows, and we have a couple of chickens, all who are wandering in and out of that area. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this to, to time when we turn on our grinder. Uh, now, we want it to be a fairly high number. We want to tell our grinder to not kill any mobs unless there were like maybe 15 in this area because we also don't want it to get too confused with the sheep and the chickens. So we've got, what, what four, five, six, we've got seven 
animals that are not cows. And so we don't really want the number to be less than seven because if it's less than seven, we could fool the system by just having all the chickens on this side and all the sheep on this side standing too close to the eye of the entrance. And then we could run out of cows. So we want it to at least be set to eight and preferably set to at least nine so that we always have at least two cows left over. I'm going to be a little bit on the cautious side and set it to like 10 or maybe even 12 or 15 because there is also the chance that random mobs will wander over and we don't want the system to be too easily confused into killing all of our cows. So... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of run a bit of a weird redstone system here. So uh, this is a six. It then goes out to five, four, three, two, one, zero. And so we want this to go like 15 blocks. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then if we just go up and out of here, that should be nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 and then we'll put down one here and that'll be 15 now the way that the grinder works is if it gets a redstone signal it will stop working and without a redstone signal it runs fine and our system is going to output a redstone signal once we get more than 15 and so what we have to do here is invert the signal so that when there is 15 or more, the grinder will start to activate and kill the mobs. And when there is less than 15, a redstone signal is applied to the grinder, turning it off. And to do that, we're going to have to make what is known as a not gate from Project Red. Essentially, a not gate will just take the redstone signal and invert it. So if you give it a redstone signal, it'll output not a redstone signal. And if you don't give it a redstone signal, it will output a redstone signal. Uh, so to make this, we need a bunch of these circuit plates, which are made by smelting up normal stone. And it doesn't seem like we have stone. And also, my team key is not working people tell me it's an extra utilities thing um but let's get some stone let's put that into here that's going to smelt up into a bunch of the circuit plates we can then craft those circuit plates up with redstone and redstone torches or a combination of redstone and redstone torches and so what i'm gonna do now guys i'm gonna wait until we have a good supply of those plates once we do, we can use them to make all of the different components for the not gate, uh, including this conductive plate. Three of these guys, which are going to need three more of the standard redstone torches. Uh, craft those up into three of these cathodes, like so. And I think that should be about it. It is. Nice. So we'll take this, and we will put this down directly on the block behind of the grinder. So we want this to go right about there like that so you can see the in is on this side out is on this side and the out you see all three of the outs are currently on they're currently emitting a redstone signal and so now even if we were to power this grinder it would not do anything because it's receiving a redstone signal telling it not to work and all we need to do now is run our redstone up and around and to there and that should now if we have like i think 16 mobs how far have we gone out with this uh let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We've got 16 blocks out. And so now if we have more than 16 cows in this area, uh, the system is going to stop itself. I might tweak this a little bit later on down the line. Uh, what we can do is if we get a red alloy wire, uh, this acts as redstone, but doesn't work with the same redstone counting system. If I was to, for example, replace these last 10 redstone with red alloy wire, what that would do is it would mean that only the first six would have the number counting. And then if we had any more than six, the red alloy wire would just be active activated and we can kind of use that to change this number if i think that 16 is too high uh, because i think it might be once we get 16 cows in here that's quite a large number of cows which might be a little bit excessive uh, but what i'm gonna do now guys i'm gonna go away real quick i'm gonna use a bunch of bone meal on all of this wheat over here try and get a bunch of wheat into the breeder try and get a bunch of cows and try to see if we can get this grinder and uh, to actually work with the the not gate behind it Okay, so I've tweaked my system a little bit here. What I've done is I've changed the orientation of the knot gate so that the inside is pointing towards this line of redstone here because it turns out my knowledge of redstone is not as good as it should be. Uh, redstone can only travel a total of 15 blocks in total. So the maximum strength that this will output is 15. And so if we were to try and go 16 blocks, it would not quite make it. You can see right now it's at 12. It's making it all the way over to here. And so I think 13 or 14. Is it at 13 now? Yeah, it's at 13. And so once it hits 14, once we have 14 mobs, within the 6x6 area detected by the eye of the ancients it should tip over activate this i'm hoping that will activate this not gate and therefore allow the grinder here to work uh, let's give it a quick try let's see if we can kind of force it to work if we run this and put it if we move one of these like uh, chickens and put it there is that going to tick that over not quite i'm assuming this is kind of like a a lost cause because it's going to probably yeah the sheep are going to move out of the way as we do it but there we go. That's one. That's not worked, which is a little bit annoying. I didn't think it was going to work. Uh, what about if we do something like 
the, oh, not like that. I didn't know that was a function of the uh, atomic disassemble. Apparently, if you right-click it, it's going to hold a bunch of land. Uh, let me quickly turn back into human mode here so I can try and pummel this back into normal. There we go. If I do this, is that going to work? If we can get that to one, I think that should work. Let's try. So our sheep has moved out of the way. We're still at one there. If we move this to here, or push it in a bit, there we go. It's going to activate it. It's going to make that's got power of one. So this is now switched around. That's going to cause the idle timer to tick down. Once it ticks down, it's going to start killing cows. It's not going to kill too many of them. You can see there, uh, it probably killed like one or two of them, uh, causing the number here to go down again, causing this to turn itself back on, causing that to stop. And so now, look at that. It's automatically done it for us. It's oriented them in the perfect orientation. Ooh, get rid of you. We did have a bit of an issue over here. I set up uh, some more item ducts. Uh, by default, it put eggs in both of them, but so what you can do is if you shift right click onto a cache, you can hear like a little click. Like so. Uh, I hope you can hear that. Uh, but when you do that, it basically locks that cache to that item. And so what I've done is locked all of these caches apart from, I guess, the, the wall here, which we can do like that. That's going to lock that. We've now got 52 wool, and this is my system. We've now fully automated uh, the process of getting a bunch of wool, getting ourselves some eggs and some feathers, as well as getting milk and beef and leather, as well, I guess, as getting some wheat, which we're not really going to use all too much outside of breeding cows, but it can also be used uh, to make cakes. We can grab some out of here. Uh, it's not going to grow, again, particularly fast, but uh, I think it might grow faster than these cows uh, might be able to use it. I'm not quite sure. Um, and hopefully we'll get a little backlog going at some point in the near future. Also, uh, one little trick that I should point out, uh, that makes it a lot easier to get a bunch of cows is using a growth syringe. You may notice that I've got this empty syringe here on my hot bar. Essentially, uh, if you grab a normal carrot, so if we quickly use uh, some bone meal here and get ourselves a fully grown carrot, uh, and you turn it into a golden carrot like we did earlier in today's episode by simply surrounding it with some golden nuggets like so, that's going to create a golden carrot. You can then craft that up with a syringe like so. And now, if you right-click with that growth syringe onto any baby animal, it will instantly become a full adult. So, for example, if we come over here and just give this guy a right-click, he's now a full adult cow. And so, if you do that a few times, which is what I've just done, uh, you'll get yourself a bunch of adult cows, and you can kind of speed up the rate at which these guys grow. Uh, but that is now my full automated tab for doing all this stuff. Next time, we're going to come back. We're going to work on a little bit more Batania. We're going to start making some of those runes. And I have a pretty cool idea of what I want to do or what I want to set up with all the Batania stuff that we're going to make. But that's for next time. For now, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video as always be sure to hit like it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below and i will see you guys next time